Today, we're talking about things we've just learned recently in R. Greg, what have you just learned in R that you could share with us today? So I'm going to talk to you about how to do a filter and filter for values near another value. And I'm quite excited about it. I literally learned this today. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Andrew, what did you learn today? Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to get citations for things that you might be doing in R, for R itself, or for packages you might be using for professional reports or academic reports. Okay, so I'm excited about learning that. And just so that people know, this is a collaboration. We're both on YouTube. We've got separate channels, but we love each other's channels. And so we're streaming onto both channels. This is a collab, a lot of fun. I love learning from Andrew. So uh, our, the links to our respective channels our programming 101 and equitable equations are in the description below this video. So check out the channels. So show us how to get nearby values. Uh, Greg. Okay, let's jump right in. I'm just going to share my screen uh, and then we will tell me when you can see the screen. I see it. Okay. So first of all, library tidyverse, people that follow Andrew and people that follow me on YouTube know that we both love using the tidyverse. It's a collection of packages. It expands the vocabulary of R. And when you're working in the tidyverse, you've got this little thing here called a pipe operator and it pipes whatever object you've got here into the next line of code is the first argument. So, but this video is not about the tidyverse. It's about this lovely little feature down here called near. So people that have worked with the tidyverse know that you can select. And so that, you know, M sleep, it's a nice built-in data set. If you've got R and you've got the tidyverse installed, you've got msleep as a data set that you can practice on and you can replicate what we're doing here on your computer, right? The msleep data, data set, uh, it's mammals that sleep, right? And they're sleeping characteristics. I've said select, because I just want the name and sleep total variables. And then you can think of the pipe operator here as just by like saying, and then filter. And here I've said, with respect to the sleep total variable, I want values that are near the number 17, right? So, and, 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 and I'm going to run this line of code and you're going to see, it'll be obvious when I run the code, what's happened here. Here we've got name. So we selected name, so name popped out and it, 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 it is selected only observations, so rows, where the sleep total value is near 17. So we've really got sort of 15, 16, 17, and 18 over here. Does that make sense, Andrew? Yeah, that's super cool, Greg. What's the uh, what's that TOL argument doing? Ah, that? that's total. I mean, tolerance. So in other words, it's got to be near 17 with a tolerance of a value of two. In other words, below and above the value 17 up to two. So it'll be between, let's say, 15 and 19 in this case. If we made that, let's change that to a tolerance of one, for example, um, and rerun the line of code. And whoop, now you can see it's a much smaller, uh, much smaller selection of rows. We've got a tolerance of just one. And if we made that a tolerance of five, then voila, we've got a much wider range of, of uh, values that it's tolerated in. And in actual fact, I believe you don't have to, I haven't done this, but you don't have to just have a value in here. You could put in a statistical parameter like variance and you could, in, and you could, uh, you know, a standard deviation and you could make that the tolerance argument. So that's so that, cool, Greg. I had no idea that that, uh, that that existed at all. It's lovely. It's a really fun little thing. I've never used it before. I literally learned about it this afternoon before we, we connected in. So super excited about this. So just to remind people that the, it's the filter is is the function and we're filtering near and then the parameters within this are the 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 variable that you looking at the value that you want the the, the it to, to find near and then the tolerance around that value okay so i hope that that is clear lots of fun absolutely love it i'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to ask you, Andrew, teach me about this citation thing that you're talking to me about, because that sounds quite interesting, and I'm excited to learn about it. Absolutely. So this is a small thing that I bumped into just randomly um, in the last few days as I was working on um, a package that I'm currently getting up onto CRAN. Um, that's going to be the FQA or package, and I'll be introducing that on my channel shortly. Um, once it's up there, it's, it's very close at this point. It's been accepted, but just hasn't quite been published yet. Um, and what I learned is that when you build a package for R, you put in a citation file. And so if you are writing a professional report or an academic report and uh, want to 
and are creating a bibliography or a references section and one site, either R itself or individual packages, you can uh, get the citation directly with a citation command. So here's the citation for R itself. You can see it's the R core team and so on. Uh -huh. If you're a BibTeX user like I am, you can get this uh, cited automatically in your paper with this syntax. Uh -huh. um, if you want to cite an individual package, well, let's load one up. For instance, um, I don't know, I've been using the here package lately. And we can get the citation for that one with citation parenthesis quote here. And uh, you can see in this case, um, it's citing CRAN, so the package itself. But uh, many packages have papers associated with them. So for instance, uh, dplyr, I believe, has a package, or has a paper, rather. And I want to now see the citation for this. So let's pull that up. There it is. And you can see the uh, actual paper and i'm wrong about that this one does not have a paper but ggplot does so let's use that one instead um library ggplot2 and citation ggplot2 and i need quotes around this one it's always a trial and error process over here um and so there we go we can see hadley's paper on ggplot2 elegant graphics for data analysis um, so I've already found that useful in the paper that I'm writing on this uh, on this package that I'm doing. I, I like the way you refer to Hadley Wickham as as Hadley. You and him are on first name basis now, <laughs> I mean, apparently. Just a just a towering figure in our programming yeah. and data. And absolutely, and absolutely. Think, well, look that that citation that citation feature looks amazing, and I imagine because uh, I'm I'm not in academia anymore. But people that are working in academia that are writing papers or that are developing packages, for example, as you described, will find this tremendously useful. So very exciting stuff. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, it's my pleasure. I love love learning things and talking about them with you. Okay. And uh, before I forget, can I just mention my channel is sponsored by Nested Knowledge. So if people are interested in doing a systematic lit review with meta-analysis, for example, you can go to Nested Knowledge. There'll be a link in the description below, and it's a it's an online platform that facilitates nested knowledge, uh, facilitates systematic review from beginning to end. Very exciting stuff. So go and check that out. Well, it's been wonderful talking with you today, Greg. As been always. a lot of fun. Thanks for your and time, I'm Andrew. To uh, to our next session. Till next time, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Talk to you soon.